had nodules on my neck. So when you prayed the third time, I said, I'm going in the bathroom and look, it's gone. We traveled all the way to Baltimore for revival, and it was powerful. 104 souls gave their lives to Jesus. 54 people got baptized. Many were delivered from demons, and 61 people were healed from pain and sickness, all in the name of Jesus Christ. I had nodules on my neck. So when you prayed the third time, I said, I'm going in the bathroom and look. And I look, it's gone. So you're telling me the doctors lied and diagnosed you with hyperparathyroidism and it was bulging out? Nodules. I had the nodules growing on my neck. So is, is it there anymore? It's not there. It just shrunk. Wow. So you can testify that your mother had the hyper whatever. Yes. And you're saying that you could see it before. What happened? It's gone. It's completely gone. Come on, mama. Amen. Comment down below what city you want us to come to next. What's up, family? We are at the airport on our way to Baltimore. Man, I'm teed up, man. I'm happy. I'm joyful. We got peace and love. Catch me with my strap. Get a bubble like a Ford. Never going back to the trap. I hope you heard me. Yeah. Steady racking up them trophies. They giving up their crutches at the altar, screaming, Hola! Hey, we out here, man. Baltimore, revival has come to your city, the remnant. God's presence is already here. I can feel his presence. God's gonna move mightily. The Holy Spirit is gonna have his way. The most high, he's alive. Jesus Christ, I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna lead the past behind. I'm so high, I'm so fly. I got fire, I'm gonna lead the past behind. The most high, he's alive. Jesus Christ. Is there a special a anointing for people to cast out demons and nobody else can do it? Is there a special anointing for some people to heal the sick and no? No. Everyone can cast out demons, heal the sick, and prophesy. Take a poison that won't do harm. Raise the dead. Lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. We're all called to do it as believers. In the Old Testament, it was specific people who were ordained by God to speak straight to God. And they were the ones that the people could hear from. They couldn't hear from God directly. They could only listen to the prophets, the high priests, to get a word from God. The veil was torn now because of what Jesus did. And now we all have access to the throne room, the holies of holies. We all have the same ability to do exactly what Jesus did. Some of you might be casting out demons as a nurse at your job. Some of you might be healing the sick as a truck driver. Some of you might raise the dead working at a morgue. The kingdom of God needs to infiltrate the world with the power of the Holy Spirit so souls can be saved. The pulpit is not for everybody. To be honest, some of you don't want the pulpit. You want to take it even deeper. You can win souls in places that I can't even go to. Some of you are called to go play overseas basketball and win souls. Some of you are called, again, like I said, to be in the medical field, healing the sick. Imagine, you, you, you have the ability to heal the sick by the Spirit of God. You're going from, from room to room, people that are supposed to be dying, no one's looking. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Bomb. Doctor, come. What happened? What happened? Incognito. Everyone say adapt. The baptism of the Holy Spirit activates the gifts of the Spirit in a believer to fulfill the Great Commission. So a witness of Jesus is somebody who knows Jesus. You've experienced him. Why did Jesus say, wait? The disciples already seen Jesus in the flesh, the fullness of God incarnate in front of them. But he said, I'm going to go and send exactly what you need so that you can actually be a witness. They knew Jesus in the physical but they didn't know him in the spiritual they needed the holy ghost baptism to be able to go out and win souls again some of you are like why am i not bold why do i keep falling back into porn why am i getting so doubtful why do i have unbelief i've seen people comment sometimes on my posts i want to be on fire like that how do i get that look very simple receive the baptism of the holy spirit he told them to wait so they can go be a witness what happened after peter was baptized in the holy spirit he went from denying jesus three times to winning three thousand souls of christ three thousand 
He didn't know the Torah like the scribes did. He wasn't super intellectual. He was the one that nobody expected to be used by God, that God used to where demons and were getting casted out by his shadow. God chooses the least likely, the ones who are able to receive him. There's some people in here who have not spoken in tongues and been baptized in the Holy Spirit because you're prideful. Straight up. You're prideful and the past you didn't receive it like you thought you would and now you're against it but you're here because you're seeing so many souls get saved on the internet and now you want to see what is this about if you're able tonight to let go of your religion in the back tradition if you're able to let go of it and say Jesus I'm tired of being prideful and religious he's gonna baptize you in his fire so what is the will of God for all our lives in this dispensation of the Holy Spirit what is God's will and intent to make disciples of all nations to win souls and expand his kingdom everyone say expand his kingdom again Matthew 6 10 I said it earlier our calling is to reach the lost not the saved we're not called to win those who are already saved to Christ if the only time you're talking about Jesus is amongst other believers you need to repent we are called to fellowship, talk about experiences and testimonies, amen, edify each other, encourage each other, correct each other, exhort, rebuke, all that stuff is amazing for the building up of the body of Christ, right? But if the only time we're talking about Jesus is to other Christians, we need to repent. How can they come out of the darkness if they don't know about the light? We're called to go out there. We're called to say Jesus loves you. Jesus wants a relationship with you. Start somewhere. So if you're not that deep yet, it's okay. Go up to people, somebody and say, God bless you. How about this? You say, God bless you in Jesus' name. Because there's a lot of gods. And I say to somebody, hey, God bless you. Everyone's going to say thank you. Muslims will say thank you. Hindus will say thank you. But the minute I say, God bless you in Jesus' name, you'll see that. So, very simple. The good news is, we all deserve to go to hell because of one sin. If you've ever lied, cheated, stole, whatever, one sends you to hell. But the life of Jesus Christ, a sinless man, that life, can enter you and you can access heaven his righteousness his holiness you can receive and the father can see you just like Jesus the father will see you through the lens of the blood of Jesus if you can confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he rose from the dead believe the good news and repent that means in your mind say I'm following this sinful way then sinful way. I'm following all these things I'm done I'm turning away today you can be born again you can receive the holy spirit and if you come out come up here tonight and you truly are done with it you're like hey, I, i'm putting you before everything i love you I, I want i want the baptism of the holy ghost and you come up here with that same mindset that same heart so what we're gonna do i do this all the time we're gonna pray i want everyone to close their eyes i'm gonna say a quick prayer with you holy spirit i pray right now that you would touch you already been moving touch even deeper the hearts of those who need to surrender tonight raise your hand if you need to give your life to christ and raise it high tonight's the night don't wait, tonight's the night. Good feeling like I'm Popeye with the spinach. We gon' change the world with Jesus Christ, just wait on me. They getting saved, going underwater like they swim. We gon' preach the truth, he hit the cross, yeah, it is finished. That's why I'm turning up now, I ain't scared about a demon. My God is powerful, you say his name, they get the scream. Yeah, it's Jesus, man. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Ain't compromising for none of you phony steady schemes. Christ, I command every vessel from their head to their feet to the front to the back whole body submit to the Word of God and the Spirit of God full healing right now all pain go to zero every spirit of infirmity loose right now I want you to check your body now check your body wherever it is where was your pain I've had back pain for over a year now where it hurts I couldn't even crack my back at all and when I would touch my bones my bones would burn it would hurt and now I feel fine hey Jesus come on where was your pain everywhere 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 shoulder back chronic knees yes lies and the devil yeah devil is a liar what happened and it's all gone you don't feel nothing nope and you jump yep <laughs> Amen. Come on. Where was your pain? One through ten. My back. One through ten. It was a. It was a seven constantly. What happened? I'm a caretaker, and um, the agency that I started with, um, they were very understaffed, so I had to lift heavy people, but myself, and um, I'm just kind of overwhelmed because I thought I would always have it, you know, um, and in a, in a way I didn't think it was important, you know. But I don't feel it, you know? Let's go, Jesus. 
<laughs> what was your pain? It was an umbilical hernia. Umbilical hernia. For how long? Um, I had my first surgery in 2010, and then they said it might come back. And lately, it's been bothering me when I put my seatbelt on. I was contemplating getting surgery for it, but it's gone. You don't feel nothing. No. I press on it. I can press on it. I don't feel anything. It's no pain at all. <laughs> Bless you, man, of God. God bless you. Literally since a child, I've been diagnosed with Achilles tendonitis. And it gets so bad, like it doesn't matter what shoe I wear. Like it will be in severe pain, like severe inflammation. But literally when you was casting out the spirit of infirmity, I felt my body shifting so much. The power of God came on me so abruptly that it just flee, like flee. And even with my shoulder, you know, they diagnosed me with, you know, arthritis in my shoulder. Said that lie. Yeah, but literally when I, when you were saying, you know, I, I cast the spirit of infirmity out, like I was feeling the fire of God literally coming upon my shoulder and it just left, like God is so good. Come on, Jesus, Jesus is king. So what was your pain? It was on my hip all the way down to my knee. I couldn't have any source of sensation at all. And How long? For like six, seven years. And I'm You're trembling right now really just happened yeah. what do you feel right now i feel like a zero because i felt like a tie like a snake around me i felt like a, a, a wrap around me that someone is suctioning the pain so much and it hurts so bad for so many years no matter the doctors or anything and they always tell me i can't do anything for you and in firm in fertility as well i felt like a pop oh, oh, say it again I felt like a pop. I felt like a burning sensation. Of infertility. So you know why? Because my wife has that anointing. You know why? Because when she, she was told by witches before she came to Christ, she would never have kids. Too. I was told that too. I know. And they said that I had hyperlactinemia where I would never be able to have children. And I'm only 23 years old, so that's nothing that I wanted to experience. She's going to pray again for you. Stand behind us in case. In the name of Jesus Christ, every unclean spirit that was attached to this room, I command you to come off right now. Up, no, up, no, up. No, 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 up. no, no, no. Up and out, Jezebel. Out. Let's go. Lee. Lee. You will not take her children. Let's go. Up and out. Up and out, Jezebel. One, two, three. Let's go. So what was the pain? Um, in my lungs. I've always been short of breath most of my life. And when you started praying, I felt this tingling go up my spine. So you don't feel nothing? Well, no, I feel my, I can take a deep breath now and I feel. And okay. You didn't do that before? No, I was always short of breath. Even when I was sitting down and when I first left off the stage, I felt like a fire right here. Stage. Amen. <laughs> my brother, where was your pain? Uh, my arms, I got into an accident two years ago and both my arms broke and I have rods and screws in both. And so it always flares up, it always hurts. And now I can go like this. I couldn't. Wow. I believe the rods and the screws evaporated and God built new bone. I, you know, I've, I've seen that happen. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I can't. You should go get an x-ray. <laughs> I should. Amen. God bless you, woman of God. I have hyperparathyroidism. You had? I had nodules on my neck, and I felt it. It felt like it was going down. So when you prayed the third time, I said, I'm going in the bathroom and look. And you could see them, you know, sticking out. And I felt, and I looked, it's gone. So you're telling me you, the doctors lied and diagnosed you with hyperthyroidism. Hyperparathyroidism. Yes. And it was bulging out? The, um nodules i had the nodules growing on my neck see it so is, is it there anymore it's not there it just shrunk Water just checked it she, where's she, where's she at? where's your dog come up here let me hear you i want to hear the witness wow so you can testify that your mother are you in the medical field you are right what do you do um a medical coder okay so then you're you're not this is real and you're saying that she had the hyper whatever yes and you're saying that you could see it before what happened? It's gone. It's completely gone. I went and looked in the bathroom and I don't feel them. She... <laughs>
Yeah, come on. I was doing it ever since the first, after you prayed the first time. I said, it feel like it's gone down. I kept saying, Does it, can you see it? Can you see it? Then I said, wait a minute. The third time you prayed, I said, I'm going to the bathroom and look. And it was gone. Completely gone. Come on, mama. Amen. Remnant Revival, Baltimore 2024 was a success. 104 souls got saved, 54 people were baptized, many people were delivered from demons, 61 people were healed from pain and sickness, all in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us know what city you want us to come to next. Like this video, share it with a friend, and subscribe to the YouTube channel with post notifications to never miss another upload. They say rich, I love you, but I know they move and phone it. He gave me real discernment, so your words they can't control. Why are you dividing in the body, man? You looking real corny. That's why I can't collapse. Rather turn up with my bro. The most high.